I don't know if it actually has a term. I just always call it mindset manipulation. It's competition. Let's kick some fucking ass. Oh. <laughs> Five to ten words. Okay. Uh, Jack Stack. So I want to kick things off by talking about your journey. One that started at age seven, watching Conan the Barbarian and lifting with your dad's home gym equipment. Your mindset and intensity have been on display early. You even had lifting goals as early as 2001, eventually leading to your specificity work and your ridiculous lifts on YouTube. So what do most people get wrong about mindset, intensity, and energy? Wow. That's a, yeah. I want to, brother, you know I like to talk first and foremost. So everything that you just talked talk about, I would love to just talk about all that but what do people get wrong in terms of mindset and intensity is that what you're saying is that was exactly. that the final question because i just my mind just went straight to conan and concrete weights in the basement and all that. We, we, we can <laughs> but, start uh, there yeah, but let's the end mind, up on the, mindset okay yeah i mean all right yeah let's start let's start there shall we um well first and foremost Uh, I don't know if there's too much to elaborate on in terms of Conan and all that. I mean, as you can see, I mean, Arnold is, you know, I used, I turned on Arnold for a bit. I think a lot of people did. You're like, oh, Arnold's such a sellout now. But I've come, it's all come full circle. It's now that I'm 36 and everything. I mean, Arnold was just like, talk about, the, I mean, everyone knew that he was like, he like lived the dream and everyone wanted to aspire to be like him and all that. And then people are like, oh, but he's such a, he's such a sell, a corporate shill sellout now. And all that, but he had this allure for something. I mean, brother, when, when I bought Conan, when I was like seven or whatever, I didn't even know who Arnold was. But I just this kid and just this jacked barbarian, <laughs> fighting off heads with packs and deltoids and all that. And then it just drew me in. And then Terminator and Commando and Predator and all that stuff. And it was just this inspiration to be this just jacked badass. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> Anyways, everything was like larger than life, I feel like, in terms of action heroes back in that day. And it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's the same for kids these days, but let's just cut the riffraff, shall we? Um, basically, I got my ass whooped by my older, a lot of like pent up aggression. And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because my brother was three years older. He wasn't like a ton older than me, but he was just older enough where he was developed and I was just this prepubescent child that couldn't fight back. So once I started lifting, it's just like, uh, just like for anybody, it just becomes this addiction. And I think that that's the way it should be. I feel like so much, so much, so many people today, the whole mindset of today is that it's like, everything has to be perfect. Like the program has to be perfect. The rep schemes, the exercise selection, it has to be perfect. It's like, what about just the love of just doing just shit in the gym, just working out. Like, who cares about if it's optimal? Who cares if it's like, are you getting the best stretch? Are you getting the best? What's the best hypertrophy rep? Right? Who cares? It's just like, I think that that's kind of the beauty of the previous generation that's lost now because there's so much information online now that everyone feels like they have to perfect their programming and stuff. Whereas, like, when I started, it was just like, I just had some like books from Barnes and Nobles that I would just look through and like learn how to do, you know, exercises through like black and white pictures. And you would just do it. You know, you would read like some Arnold stuff about failure and all you just, just do everything to failure basically. And it's like, that was probably the way to go because it's like, now it's, everything's like RPE seven and all that. But how do you even know? like what RP seven is, unless you've really pushed yourself in terms of the weights, in terms of the reps and all that, you have to really, you have to go there. You have to freaking dig yourself in the grave to know what true RPE 10 is. You know what I'm saying? So for most people, it's like, Oh, it's optimal. It's optimal. Oh, I think that's, I think that's about RPE seven. Yeah. How would the, how would they know? You know what I mean? So then like um, something that helped me a ton with lifting was when I was in like uh, competitive wrestling, like high school, college wrestling, where you it's man versus man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 
at that time, that was like so important to me. I mean, as most sports are for kids at that age, it was like everything. So like, like for instance, like the state championship finals and stuff, it's like, I have worked so hard for this. I can't lose this. You know what I mean? I won that match by like a point. It was like eight to seven or something, but that's like really just like where you're, you're shaking and you know what I mean? Like the lactic acid, like your body's really like pushed itself to the absolute limits because you're my, because like mentally you can't lose. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you're Mm -hmm. actually pushing yourself to failure. And, um, that like wrestling in that regard was the greatest thing ever for my lifting because it, it just showed me how far my body can go, especially in college where they're just absolute psychos. And, you know, we did like two practices a day over Christmas break. It was like three a day. And that was where I really got a sense of like what overtraining actually is. Whereas like, I couldn't like get out of bed. You know what I mean? Like I would get home from like a practice or something and I would lay down and I just like look, just physically just like couldn't get back up. And I was like, okay, I think I'm, I think I've reached that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas I would never experience that with like doing bicep curls and tricep push downs. And you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's that. So I've experienced like really pushing my body to that degree versus just like, oh, like, this is awesome. I love doing this. This is just like fun stuff. You know what I mean? So I, I've gone to the limits, so I know how far I can push it. So then, like, basically for the, the mindset, it's like, for lifting weights and building strength and size, whatever, like, brother, our bodies are capable of so much. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, like, you're going to put tons of strength on every time you go to the gym, but, like, mentally – mentally it's always going to hold us back physically so people like they really just pigeonhole themselves like oh if i just gain 20 pounds of muscle maybe i can put five pounds on my bench it's like brother you can lose 20 pounds of muscle and still put five pounds on your bench it's just it's all about your attitude and so it's really about desire and willpower and stuff like that will yourself into hitting bigger weights and i've had people kind of like oh it's the dumbest thing i've ever heard you can't just you can't just mentally will yourself to hit PRs. It's like, yes, but you can. Maybe not with like every single lift, but I'm a really big proponent now of um, any time I give people advice. I'm like, dude, when you go to the gym, what do you do? You probably do like five exercises for the most part, people in general. <clears throat> so you did five exercises. Now, your first exercise or your second, they're probably going to be your most important ones. You know what I mean? They're going to be like your, your squat and your deadlift or something like that. Like, I don't care about, like, the program. That's why it kind of drives me insane where people are like, what's the best program? It's like, no. It's just the freaking, the mentality when you go to the gym, okay? You probably have a plan. You know, you're going to probably squat or deadlift or lunge or even, like, leg extension or leg press or leg curl or something like that. As long as I'm one of these things, <clears throat> and this is why it's important to track your lifts, your reps, your weights, or whatever. Because as long as I'm one of these things, you hit one extra rep, or you hit five extra pounds, or you even did yep. one extra set, or anything like that. It's a win. It's a win for the day. It doesn't matter what you do with these other exercises. Because as long as you write it down, just every day in your journal or on your video log or something like that, you've just taken your you've just taken your base, like you just leveled up one notch. It doesn't have to be on the same lift every time. Just on something. And if I can't one-up something, which you always can, but if I can't, then I'll just, like, do something that I've never done before. I'll push the sled farther than I've ever pushed it, or I'll, I'll do some sprints on a treadmill, or just something that I haven't done before. So that way, it's not about, like, oh, my, my program needs to be optimal. It's like, no, it's just fucking instilling. It's instilling this... Uh, obligation that you have to one up yourself. You have to better yourself every time you're in the gym. And as long as you have that mentality, you're going to be fucking a champion in the gym. You know what I mean? You're going to be winning every time you go to the gym. And that's what makes the gym fun. People burn out because they want the optimal program. They need everything to be perfect. But like, I don't even, what I do now for programming for myself, my only programming now 
And I've come up with this, it's not because anything unique, but this has come from, you know, decades of doing other programs and trying stuff out and learning my body and all that. But like now I'll just have an upper body, let's say Monday's upper body, Tuesday's lower body, Monday's upper body, Tuesday's lower body. And it's like, whoa, what? Are you going to recover? And well, it's like, here's the thing. Like each muscle group recovers differently. Your body, like there's going to be a lot of factors that play into your recovery to how you feel and all that. So for instance, two days ago I did, a, it was my lower body day, but I, um, you know, like my quads per se, like my leg driving didn't feel that locked in. So I just ditched any leg drive movements and just ditched the quads. And it just turned into predominantly like a hip hinge day. And then yesterday was just an upper body day. So today is lower body again. So that means that today I'll probably do more of a quad dominant leg drive day. But that's not to say that it's always, you know, day one of lower bodies, hamstrings and glutes, and then day two of lower bodies, quads. It's just, it goes, it's just case by case because like, that's just how the body is. You're never going to recover the same every single time in the gym. So why try to program that? Because that's not optimal. What's optimal is you go in there, you warm up and say, okay, like if you're like, you're pulling or something, like, oh, I mean, like, you know, I'm feeling a little sluggish, a little weak on like my pulling movements. So why don't I go freaking full psycho on my pressing movements and do a little bit of flush, a little bit of pump on my pulling stuff. So that way in two days, for my next upper body day, Maybe I'll be a lot, I'll be freaking, you know, super recovered and ready to just crush my pulling stuff then. I feel like, and that only comes with a lot of experience though. So I, to say that to a noob, like they're not really going to understand how their body feels, but at the same time, they're also probably going to recover a lot more easily too. So, and then they're just getting a lot of overall volume in. So if you're doing that <clears throat> upper Monday, Tuesday, lower, or upper, upper, Thursday, lower, upper Friday, Saturday body sessions and plenty of lower body sessions in. Like you're getting plenty. So it doesn't matter if one day it's like, oh, I didn't, but I didn't do my quads. And it doesn't matter because you have two more sessions of the week where you can get your quads in. So that's just, uh, again, it all plays this is one hell of an answer for you, but it all plays into just like, just getting the best out of yourself, out of your performance, hitting bigger and better goals every single time. And with an upper lower split, I feel like that allows me plenty of opportunities to do that. And how does that wrap into what you even asked in the first place? Well, it's the, just the mindset, the intensity that when I get in there, I'm going to hit a bigger and better anything. Even if it's freaking tricep push downs, I'll do it. You know what I mean? But that's where it's important for people to really know their where they're at in terms of their numbers. And not just on bench, squat, and deadlift, but like every time. Every, Absolutely. Push, you know, delts, triceps, biceps, all that. Worst case scenario, hit freaking calf PR. Yeah, I feel like it's the mindset of an athlete. Like you treat it like it's a sport. So you're always looking at ways to improve yourself. And I think you touched on one really good thing, which is around energy. If you're doing stuff you're excited about and you're enthusiastic about, like you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to progress as opposed to doing something that might you know, be quote unquote more optimal. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I and mean, that's another thing too. That's when, when people, they're just going in with a pro or with a plan. Some people might like it. Some people might like the, the strict structure. I have to do this and this, but for the most part, um, I feel like people want to do, yeah. Like you don't really know what you're going to be excited about until you get in there and you start moving and stuff. You say, oh, this doesn't feel that good to that, but this feels good. I'm going to freaking put all of my, freaking you know eggs in this basket and like because we only have so much energy per workout you know what i mean you can't go crazy with five things so that's why i kind of also look at the same thing i'm saying if you're doing like five things well maybe it's more of a, a warm-up feel good movement feel good movement and then go freaking crazy and then just pump pump or like flush you know what right. i mean because yeah for me there's only there's only one exercise per workout that i can go nuts with so cool Awesome. But that, so what that I, going nuts with it comes with going nuts with it comes with being excited about doing it. They go hand in hand. You're not going to freaking go crazy and psycho and you know perform the best. You feel euphoric about it if you don't want to do it. You know, 
And it's the same thing with like sports, like you were talking about, like the kids that didn't want to be there for practices of you can tell. And the kids that didn't want to be there didn't usually do well either. So it's the same. It's just, it all goes hand in hand, like lifting weights, lifting <clears throat> for the most part, you know, curls and squats and all that. It's not a sport for the most part, unless you're competing in power. But I'm talking about just in general, going to the gym. It's not a sport, but it should be approached as if it is a sport. It shouldn't just be approached as if it's like um, just uh, hmm, how do people approach it? Well, just like a part of the like, oh, I got to go through the motions. It's like, no, today it's fucking game day. It's competition. Let's kick some fucking ass. Win the day. You know, win the gym. Okay. And if you don't better yourself, you're, you're weaker, you don't better something, you didn't win. You know what I mean? And you should leave there feeling like, oh, I lost, right? And I'm not saying that people should feel bad and all that, but you should. You should because you, you could have tried a little harder or found something that you could have done something better with. And it's just that it's, brother, I mean, I can talk forever and I can talk to myself forever, which I think you <laughs> but I'm very good at talking to myself. But like, you know, I've uh, I've been a strength coach. I've been a personal trainer and stuff like that. And I know the general attitude of most people. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I, I got to work out. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, that's already, it's like people in a sport, like, ah, I got to go to practice. You know what I mean? Already. Like, you're never going to be. You, yeah, exactly. You should be fired. You're like, you know what I mean? And if you're not fired up about it, you have to find a way to get yourself excited about doing it. And if you if you can't find a way to get yourself excited about doing it, you have to change your approach. You have to change your training because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like training, <clears throat> training is a, it's a lifetime thing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if you're, how can you ever expect to be at your best and be consistent? If this should be a lifetime thing and day to day, you don't want to do it or day to day, like you know, maybe I should take the day off. Like I've said this before, but like, if you are looking forward to taking days off, you have to change your training because <laughs> clearly you're not excited about it. And I know people are be like, well, but you need recovery days. Dude, I can tell you from personal experience, like when I've had to travel and I was forced to take days off, I never feel better <clears throat> after taking yeah. days off. I feel better. I feel sluggish and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like when I take days off, I feel better when I just do light stuff in the gym. Like if I'm sure. really like beat down or I, I feel bad or I don't have much energy, I will always feel better if I just do, you know, arms, <laughs> like the easy shit sure. that doesn't like arms and shoulders, fun. get a quick pump. Yeah, exactly. Get a quick pump. Then you feel good. Nobody gets a quick pump and hits arms and shoulders and looks in the mirror and like, oh, I feel like shit. It's like usually like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I, you know, look good, feel good. That's not going to tax your recovery. I'm not saying you have to do like, you know, 800 pound cheat curls and stuff. I'm saying you grab some freaking you know, 15 pound dumbbells, 20 sure. pound dumbbells, do this kind of stuff. Just do this. Kind of, this is not going to, that's not going to tax your recovery to the point where like, oh, I can't recover. Why did I do cable push downs that really cut into my recovery? You know what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like just right. going to the gym, just gym. I used to do, I found that when I was young, uh, because I, you know, I started working when I was 11 and I started wrestling, I think when I was 12 or something. And I think I caught the lifting bug pretty early where I wanted to lift a lot. I can't remember, but I just, I do remember that I kind of realized about myself. I was like, man, if I do a light, a light lift, like before I go to my dual meets or whatever, I, I wrestle better I, before I go to my competitions. If I just do like light lap pull downs and sure. light curls and pull ups and stuff. And I think it's just because you know, improve circulation and you just feel better. And when you feel better, you perform better. So For yeah, sure. like that's what I'm talking about. Like that's an off day, just light, light pull downs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Light arms. Yeah. Cool. Light All right, so what, bench press. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out some uh, career accomplishments. You tell me if it's a highlight or a low light. Okay. The first one is, uh, Doing an 880 pound behind the back deadlift on YouTube. <laughs> oh, that's definitely a highlight. So, you know, I'm glad you bring these up because I, I totally forget about all this kind of stuff. But let me just say that I've gone back to doing behind the back deadlifts and I'm like, frankly, I was like really strong 
because like proportionally I was weaker back then. You know what I'm saying? Like my squat was weaker. My conventional deadlift was weaker. My bench press was deep, was weaker and all that. Just like everything was weaker for the most part. But with those specific lifts that I really put all of my energy into, I really specialized in them. I got very strong with like Jefferson deadlifts, Zercher deadlifts, behind the back deadlifts. And it, that's just that's just proof that it's like a lot of times strength is not so much muscle per se. You know what I mean? It's, it's more of just like skill, which I've been, you know, I've, I've been preaching that for like, a, you know, a decade now, but it's just, it just goes to prove that like for real, like just the more you practice a lift and the more you do a lift, like you're going to get fucking strong. If you just put the time in with that particular lift. Whereas like I was saying, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like my leg press and all that stuff theoretically is a lot shorter. It is stronger now. So theoretically I should have, have a stronger behind the back deadlift but the thing is i don't put the time the practice the the same discipline that i put into it so like my best one recent as recently which is when i went back to it for a bit for like a few months ago it was like 800 and it was you know it was not easy so <laughs> yeah i mean it just is crazy how much like you can get anyone can get very very freaking strong if you and the main thing about that was too is I was really excited about doing hitting bigger PRs back then, and with that excitement comes the success for sure. Yeah. So for now, for me, for now, the fact that I can look back and I'm like, well, frick, I hit 880. Like I'm not excited to hit 800. I'm not excited to hit 820, 840, 860. I yeah. want to be excited to hit 880. I've already done it. So it makes that already makes it like 10 times harder for me because I don't have the same level of desire because I've been there and I've done that. You know what I'm saying? But I, if I, I would put 900 that. on the bar, I probably would get the fire back. It's just that's the hardest thing about trying to hit PRs. Honestly, the hardest thing for me is getting through those top warm up sets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like um, if I'm Sam Trap Bardella, because I've been doing that more recently than behind the back to LFT. But like I want to get to an all time best, which would be like 920 for me. And uh so far I've gotten to 870 and it's it's not easy. And I've hit 910 many years ago when I was smaller and weaker, but because I had the fire to to hit those bigger ways because I've never done it before and I was excited about it. <clears throat> well like for me for instance with the trap or death like warming up once I get to like high 700s, low 800s, that weight is so fucking hard. And when you think about what, like, so the 870 or like the 850, the 850, the 870 move twice as easily as like 780. You're like, how does that make sense? It's, you know, it's 90 pounds less, but it's because it's like, well, frick, it's just the mentality. It's like, this is a warm up. You know what I mean? Like, this is easy weight. This is easy weight. But because you're thinking that and you don't have this adrenaline, this excitement, it feels hard as shit. But then once you get to that top set, it's like it just, you know, it's the fight or flight. It's the do or die kicks in. And it's just crazy how much strength that that can release. It's really crazy. Like, um, I think that's why I started going to the gym, the commercial gym for a while, was because I needed a new atmosphere. And once I realized that, like, I'm like, oh, people look at me <laughs> when I hit like top sets. And then when people are looking at me, it's like, do or not. I can't fail. I'm not going to look like a, like a freaking buffoon <laughs> failing sets at a commercial gym. So it's like, I, it just brings up this extra level of like fight or flight. Awesome. And when I do that, it's just a, a lot of strength. But I've recently been getting back in the, my, my uh, garage gym. And it's like, okay, I think I'm starting to get back to my groove. I just got to crank the tunes. I just got to scream bloody murder. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, that's just really, that's just how I unleash the the beast from within. You know what I'm saying? Like, Why are you just scream? Why are you screaming? It's like, I don't know, man, but it's a human it nature works. mechanism. It's a human mechanism that... <laughs> Why does a bear growl or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just in our, you know, we're just humans. And I guess it's just one of those like biological things that releases intensity and adrenaline. All right. Just does. Next, next one here, getting your own action figure. Is this a <laughs> highlight or a low light? Uh, it's, I mean, that's, 
anything that's WWE related is always going to be a double edged sword because at the time, like when that came out, I was hurt. I was injured. You know, I had my surgery. So I was like, like doing. I saw it cut out. Hopefully you can hear me. Anyways, so like when that came out, it was, ah, it was great because there was also all this, like the toy was selling really good. It was like one of the top selling toys when it came out. And it gave this excitement to me because I was on fire before I got hurt. The way yeah. I was getting booked, you know, I was beating everyone. You know, everyone thought that we were going to win the tag team championship. Um, and that me getting hurt ruined that. And, you know, I just like really just steamrolling. Like it was crazy. Like I was like, oh, I'm for certainly headed to be one of the top baby faces in the company. Um, and then once I returned and nothing happened and I never got booked and all that. And then now I look at that toy and it's like, I don't know, but it, it's, I'm just very bitter about the way things ended with WWE. Sure. But at the end of the day, like the toy is cool. And I'm glad, I mean, it's better to have the toy than not have a toy. I know some people that got, you know, called up to like Raw and SmackDown. They were there for a bit and then got released and never got a toy in the first place. So same thing with like being on the video game. It's like once you're on the game, so, you know, immortalized in a sense in what you know people can play the video game 40 years from now and go, oh it's rick boobs you know what i mean <laughs> like, what's up? is it true that yeah. you were upset that they only listed you at 233 pounds yeah of course dude i tried <laughs> so hard to gain as much weight possible um during my recovery because like when i was um getting a push under vince mcmahon but like he wanted me to be – so I don't know if you're how familiar you are. I don't blame anyone for not being familiar with this. But he wanted me to be like Ivan Putsky, which was just this like just ultra jacked. Granted, the guy was like, you know, five foot nothing. But he was just like super jacked and stout. Huh. Um, so like – and he's like, if you can – like the writers and stuff like, oh, if you, could, if you could be like his Ivan Putsky, like we're talking about like big time push. So – we were kind of headed towards that, I suppose. And then when I got hurt, you know, I was like, all right, well, I just got to come back. I just got to just jacked and be everything that, you know, he envisioned me being and like, you know, be a main event and stuff. Um, but obviously once he was not the booker anymore and stuff, things changed. And I was like, just, but I got to like 290. I even weighed in for like the medical team because they weren't updating. Nobody was updating my weight. So I weighed in for like as many people as I could. You know what I mean? I weighed in for the medical team. I weighed in for um, the announcers. I weighed in for like Bruce Pritchard and stuff like that. Um, and for some reason, they just refused to actually use my normal weight. I don't know. I guess it's just because if I'm 290, then it doesn't make the, I don't know, like the guys that are 260 and supposed to be huge. It just, I guess, undersells them, I suppose. I don't know. That's strange. I don't know. I'm glad. I'm just glad to be done with all the weird mind games and you know all that kind of stuff. I'm worrying about backstage. Like, oh, what do people think of me? What do they say? You know what I mean? I'm just. I really enjoyed my time. I enjoyed wrestling or professional wrestling and all that. But, but it's just like it's just such so many mind games that I'm done. Happy to be done with it. All right, I'll go in a totally different direction. How about uh, winning the 2005 Teen Read Bookmark Contest? <laughs> ultra proud of that yeah that was, it's like what do you read you can do anything and it's like a boy that turned into a chicken man <laughs> turned into a half man half chicken because his brain possessed the power because he reads books i think i won like a 50 dollar best buy gift card which for like a high school kid it's pretty good Box. You know, I mean, you could buy a video game or you buy a couple CDs. We used stuff. to go to Best Buy every lunch and just play the free video games and stuff because we had no oh, yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guitar Hero and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go play Guitar Hero. All right. I got one I more well, here. Yeah. Judging the Air Guitar Championship at Download <laughs> Fest. <laughs> Am I proud of that? Yeah. Is that a highlight or a low light or neither? <laughs> Um, hmm. at the time it seemed like a highlight, 
Yeah, hell yeah. But like once I did it, it's like I don't know. It kind of kind of like uh, oh really? Yeah, like this isn't that cool. <laughs> the air guitar chip because it wasn't uh, like it, dude. It was at Download Fest, which is like giant music festival, and it was just like I don't know a handful of people watching and stuff. It was just, I see. It was me and like the other judge. I, I think the other judge was like, uh, I don't know, like a some sort of has-been rocker or something like that too. So it just was like, it felt like it's something that like people grasped it at straws to, I don't know, to feel relevant. I don't want to be rude or anything, but that's just no, that's like, fine. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back to lifting. What's your Mount Rushmore, your top four back exercises to get jack, stacked, succulent, and dense? Hell yeah. There you go. You got it. Jack, stacked, succulent, dense. <clears throat> the holy quad. Quad. What is it? Not trilogy. Quadri- quadrilogy. Uh, top four back exercises. Well, I would obviously say, obviously, weighted pull-ups, deadlifts. Um, I like heavy dumbbell rows for sure. Um, other than that, I don't really need, I don't honestly, I don't do too many back exercises. I think that those ones alone, really all you need. Um, anytime I'm in the gym, if I'm, like I said, I do upper lower. If I ever do back stuff, it's going to be, I'm just going to bang out some pull-ups. I'll grab the heaviest dumbbells and hit some rows. If I do deadlifting, I just consider that like the only back movement I do for the most part. Um, I guess just, I would say just for the high volume, I would just put like lap pull downs on there just because it's something that you can get a, you can easily get or yeah, any of the cable and I'll just say any cable pull because it's the best thing you can do for just getting like ultra pump. And yeah. I get people all the time calling me out like, oh, but you said that it's about the weight. It's not about the pump and the mind muscle. Like, so yes, asshole. How many times do I ever got to say it? Yes. Lifting bigger and heavier weights, that's like going to be the key. You know what I mean? Like trying to progress on weighted pull-ups or rows or deadlifts. Like that's the freaking, that's the cake. But I'm never going to say that like getting a pump in terms of like warming up, getting a flush or something to warm up or just like, all right, I just maxed out my deadlifts. I'm pretty crushed, but why don't I try to just, you know, crank out some wet, some reps up the wazoo, you know what I mean? High repetition sets. Like I'm a huge fan of doing uh, like super high reps. And uh, I really do feel like it's, I know people say like, it's just endurance and all that, but like, for instance, like triceps or like, like lateral raises, like sets of a hundred, just like a hundred. Yeah, so they can just get you so, um, and I don't care about the. I'm not saying a oh, strict hundred. Doesn't matter. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about like if I got good weight on there, you know, say like I'll put the full stack and I'll try to do the the, the strictest reps I can. And when they break down, I'll you know I'll cheat it and I'll start to use my lats involved and I'll use sure. more and more lats. And if I can't do any more, drop it and then go back to like strict and. But yeah, that and then doing like lateral raises and then as it gets, you know, like your form break, you know, I need to start using a little shimmy to get them up or whatever. Like, get them up. Yeah. It's just crazy. I'm not saying that that's like a game changer, but I've started doing that like just for like one or two sets of workout. And I really do feel like it makes a difference. If nothing else, it makes you sore as shit, which I think at least in stills, like I had a good workout. So if yeah. nothing else, like I'm going to push my body to the limits. You also threw out dumbbell rows. I feel like less people are doing dumbbell rows these days. I don't know if you feel yeah. that to be the case. Now they're doing deficit Smith machine bent over rows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody does a dumbbell row. Anymore. I don't know why. It's just, I used to do them like crazy, the croc rows and I also went crazy on like barbell rows, but I mean, with the, with the dumbbell rows, again, it's another movement where you can do as strict as form as you want, but you can keep progressing and the form can get a little looser and a little sloppier and that's okay. And then I, it's just so funny. Cause I know exactly what people think because I've been uploading videos for 10 years and I see all these comments. So I know exactly every side of the spectrum of what people think. Yeah. So the heavier ones, so you're not getting any squeeze. You know what I mean? Like, wait, there's no zero reps were done. But it's like with 380 pounds. 
You know what I mean? It's like, okay, so yeah, I'm not getting a squeeze, but now but, we know with the but you're in with you're in the lens position. With the yeah, exactly. Stretch, it's like now what are they gonna say? Because that's the most important thing. And like the stretch is insane, and you're even just getting that initial like uh, retraction, like that's all with 380 pounds per arm. That's more than enough. It's all you need. So if you get any sort of like this with that much weight, then you can strip half the weight, and it's what 190 pounds, which is still astronomical, and you can do a lot better. And then you can even strip half of that weight, you know, and then you got like a hundred pound dumbbell, and they will feel like a peanut and. That's just one of those things that I discovered for myself. I know obviously people have been doing it forever, I'm sure. But for myself, I was like, holy fuck. For anything, if I, if I load the dumbbell row up with 400 pounds and then I even just pick it up and then I strip 100 pounds off, that 300-pound dumbbell is going to feel so much easier than if you just warm up to the 300-pound dumbbell. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with, yep. like, um, squatting. What I used to do, I used to do this with everything, with bench pressing and stuff. So we'll say for bench, because I did do it a lot with bench. If I was going to go for a PR, say I'm going for a 500-pound bench, something that I really like to do, and I stopped doing it. I don't know why, because it, there's a reason I did it so much, was I would I would warm up normally. So, you know, I would do 405, whatever, 445, 475 or something. And then it's like you would go to 500. But instead of going to 500, I would put like 550 on or something like that and just unrack it and just hold it. And then put it down, shake it for a bit, instantly strip the 50 pounds. Then try to or some sections of pressing it back up, which is like super uh, maximal load. So same thing with squatting. Just unrack a hundred. Be safe though, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Don't <laughs> don't put hundreds of more pounds on you can handle. But before you go for a PR, just unrack, you know, 50 to 100 more pounds more, like in the safeties or something. Just unrack it and hold it for a bit, put it down, strip the hundred pounds, and then pick it up. And it just it priming the nervous system. Oh, uh, you know what else that worked really well for it was overhead press. Just unracking it and just, uh, mm. just getting just this kind of shrugging motion. And when you rack it back, it just feels like a peanut. And perception is everything. Like when you first pick that weight up, how that weight first initially feels is going to dictate how that, you know what I mean? It's going to dictate that fucking rep and that aggression that you use towards it and that energy that you put towards it. I'll tell you something right now. If I pick a bar up and it feels heavy as shit, I'm probably not going to hit the rep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if I pick it up, it's, yeah, I'll probably hit it. And it could be the same way. It's just, how it feels in my hands. For sure. I heard you say something like, I like the placebo effect. A placebo effect works even when I know it's a placebo effect. So it, it kind of <laughs> relates to what you were just saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I th think that that was like, not to be, you know, freaking Johnny scientist or I'm pretty sure that there was some sort of study or something that showed that even when people were taking a placebo effect, it still worked. I think that's just because the slight, when they knew that it was a placebo, it still had an effect, a slight effect. And I think that's just because like maybe deep down, you're not, you know what I mean? Like you're not sure. You're not a hundred percent sure if it does something or does nothing, but yeah, dude, if I could take like just pills of, you know, flour and sugar, then, and it worked, then that, why wouldn't you do that? You know what I'm saying? Anything, to trick yourself to feel like you're stronger, or whatever, bigger, or anything like that. I feel like that's also like for gyms. Like I, I will always go to the gym that has a good mirror. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's some gyms that have like the narrow mirrors, which I think the girls like and makes them look slimmer. <clears throat> but if I'm at a gym that has a nice wide mirror that makes you look bigger than you really are, I'm fucking feeling good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm gonna lift better, and I'm probably gonna perform better. He's like, fuck, I'm looking jacked. You know what I'm saying? And then he busts out the phone and take a picture. You're like, wait a second, I look like shit. God, this mirror must be really good. But like, all these things, dude, the, it's the fucking mind, man. The mind, it's, it literally is everything. <laughs> no. If you believe that you're strong as a freaking buffalo, you're going to probably be better than if you think that you're weak as a daffodil. You know what I'm saying? I've said this to pl plenty of people too. It's like, dude, your mindset, 
your perception is everything. If you wake up and think and you're telling yourself you feel like shit, like you're probably gonna have a bad workout, you're probably gonna have a bad workout. But if you like, if you just think to yourself or tell yourself, like, I'm gonna hit a PR in there, right? You might not hit a PR on a big lift or something, but one way or another, you're gonna fucking hit a PR because you're putting it out in the universe. Self-fulfilling prophecy, you know what I'm saying? Like you just put it out, if you just put it out there, it's probably gonna happen. Oh, I'm yeah. feeling like shit. I'm feeling weak. I'm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift as well today. That's probably what. Don't put it up there. That's what's going to happen. You know. Yeah, I think that relates to not just lifting. So when I started my career in sales, the first day on the phone, the goal was to make seventy calls. I made 145 yeah. calls. Then oh, the next day, geez. I made 160 calls. So I. So by oh the second God. week, by the second week, ever, all my other classmates, there was like 20 of them. They knew they couldn't compete with me. And I, at that point, created that identity around it where I couldn't have a bad day because I had to kind of keep that going. Oh, yeah. sure. I was that guy yeah. who made all the calls. And then I, I kept yeah. doing it for like years. And then yeah. my bad day yeah. was like 90 calls when someone's good day was 70. Like I was just crushing it. Yeah, absolutely. The bar, right? And that's that's what I'm saying about always going to the another. It's the same thing like you. You know what I mean? Like your worst day is 90 calls, which is 20 calls more than someone's best day. Okay, so it's like for the gym, you know, someone's my worst day is hitting a PR when someone's like best day is hitting a PR. You know what I'm saying? Like so, it's just it's just setting the tone and like setting a standard for yourself. And really, it's just yeah, it's I guess it's how you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of like how you got in there. How did you kick so much ass on those calls? 140. Like, what was your mindset going into that? My mindset was to be the first one there, make calls to different time zones. At the end of the day, I was calling West Coast and just to get it. I just wanted to like destroy my my friends, like in the in the nicest way possible, like the crew around me. Yeah, I wanted them yeah, yeah, to no, feel. I totally get that. It was probably through hate a little bit. Like I wanted I'm them a... to feel bad that I was better than them. I was in my early twenties, you yeah. know what I mean. It wasn't necessarily probably... coming from the best place, but I I wanted to be that guy, and then I became that guy by doing it over and over again. That's competition, man. Like I feel like again, that's something else that. I think people need to bring to the gym. I think I've, I might've talked about this before, but like just being at the gym, I, I think I just left someone a video yesterday or something where I was like, you, the greatest feeling is going to the gym. And it's the same thing for you're doing with the call. But the greatest feeling is just like winning, beating fellow men is the greatest feeling. And like, even if you, so you're like, oh, but I'm not in a sport or whatever. I don't compete. No, you do. Like everything. And again, it can be a friendly way, but everything is a competition. In a way. You know what I'm saying? Like you go to the gym and um, like personally for me, like if I like when somebody strong is lifting next to me because <clears throat> I see what they do and I try to lift more, you know what I'm saying? Double their reps or something. It's just fun. And there's no ill intentions. Or I told somebody else, it's like, Imagine the greatest feeling in the world that someone's on this machine that you want to use. They have half the stack on. You ask if you can work in. You bump it up to the full stack. You double their reps. And then you ask if you want me to lower the weight back down for you. Like, talk about just absolutely decimating your fellow man in the gym. <laughs> and you didn't do anything wrong. You're just getting your sets in. But, like, what is the point of being, like, what is human nature? But, you know, I'm trying to climb the totem pole of, you know, the male species in one way or another, whether it's like success in terms of like, um, like what, you know, the, the work regard yeah. or the physical regard. Like yeah. we all want to just strive to be our best versions of ourselves and be the best version. But like, we don't want to be worse than everyone around us. You know, I was like, I don't know, just with, um, with all that, I was telling this guy too. I was like, man, like when you get like strong and you get like jacked or fit, not even super jacked, but just being fit and all that, like life just is easier because like I use this analogy, like most people look at wearing gym clothes, like, oh, that person's a slob. All they wear is gym clothes. But if you're like fit and you know, like you're you know, jacked, muscular or whatever, you wear gym clothes and be like, oh, like, this guy's super athletic. He's, he looks great. Whereas if you're out of shape or whatever and you wear gym clothes, like, oh, he's a slob. Like, why isn't he wearing 
uh, you know, jeans or suit pants or suit or something like that. You know what I mean? Like just, <laughs> there's so much incentive to just try to be the best version of yourself physically, obviously mentally. I think they go hand in hand, but like, uh, I, yeah, I don't know where I that think, came from. But I think it's yeah, funny. I think there's a piece on like knowing who you are from an identity standpoint. So like you want to be the best version of yourself, but you don't want to copy people. Like there's people who are trying to be you, but if that's not who you are, don't be that person, be the best version of yourself, compete on things you can compete on and try to win there. But not everyone yeah, can yeah. be you. Not everyone can be me. It's like, you got to figure that out at a young age. Like oh, who do you yeah. want to be? Who can you be? What's your personality and how does it all work together? You can't force it either. Yeah. I would fail miserably if I tried to be you. Holy buckets. Imagine that. <laughs> I get zero apps done. <laughs> Five phone calls a day. Yeah, and I don't think, and I don't think I can eat as many bagels as you. No matter yeah. how hard yeah, I try. Yeah, right. Not gonna <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I want you to man. rank. I want you to rank these three things from worst to best. Okay. Free mm -hmm. cinnamon raisin bagels and Mount Hagen coffee for life. Add a hundred pounds to the PR of your choice or play with Iron Maiden in front of a hundred thousand people. Wow. Holy buckets. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, financially, obviously the cinnamon raisin Mount Hog, because that <laughs> adds up. I mean, agreed. At some point, you know, I was eating the two sacks of bagels and the Mount Hog and coffee is the premier instant. So <laughs> That one I, I was leaning towards right away, but with the hundred extra pounds on the max for life, I mean, that could monetarily set you up for some success as well because you can mm. be, you know, talking about like putting you in the upper echelon of elite strength, which gets you recognized by other companies and whatnot. So maybe they give you the funds to buy those bagels in Mount Hagen. The Iron Maiden one would be cool, but you know, it's, I've I never played with Iron Maiden, but I've I've played in front of a hundred thousand people before. You, you know have, I mean? like, yeah. <laughs> so I've done that, and it's great in the meantime. But the moment it passes, and I feel like that's why like rock stars. And I feel like they just get so jaded because like once you've done it a couple times, it's like it's just eh, it's just work. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy how our body is just like or our minds. Like you see something you're like oh like that'd be so badass, but once you do it, you're like wow, that really. It wasn't that as cool as I thought it would be. You know, it's not that special. You know what I mean? It's cool. Don't get me wrong, but like these moments are fleeting. You know what I mean? Like long term. That's I think that's why I want like brother. My I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very scatterbrained. So I'm thinking of a million different things at once. It's like which one do I want to tell you? But anyways, that's why I feel like I'm like having a great time is cool, but I want to I want to have a good time forever instead of little great times. Here. love that you know what i'm saying like Great that's man. why i stopped like drinking and all that too because it's like yeah you have fun but then it's you feel like shit and it's over and it, and you happens, and, you, and you end up under a desk without pants on yeah exactly yeah yeah so but even taking the trouble aside yes but <laughs> taking all the yeah those you know where you get yourself into some trouble taking that stuff on the side it's like yeah it's fun but like, I want to have, I want to feel, feel good and have a great time right. every day. And not just like, I don't want to go like this and like this and like this. I want to be just freaking up here the whole time. You know what I mean? So I want to feel good 24 seven. I want to find things that like, I can enjoy every single day. Like for me, like you can't drink every day. You know, otherwise you'll be an alcoholic, but like it loses its, uh, once you start drinking back to back, I learned that at a young age in college, you know what I'm saying? Like the first time you drink, it's great. And then the second time you try to get get back up there and you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, whereas it's like feeling good, eating well, getting strong, getting jacked and just feeling good 24 seven and, and getting good sleep and all that. It's just overall it's so much more rewarding and all that. So we're like, how do we even get to this topic? Well, the Iron Maiden thing. If I had to pick 100 pounds on my lifts versus playing a one-night thing, I would 100% go with the, the long-term thing. I always want to look at the long-term, not just the, oh, that would be cool, short-term, one and done. You know what I mean? I want, yeah. That's why, it's, it's like, um, 
I don't know. That's why I try to look at things as like, can I do this stuff my whole life? You know what I mean? Yeah. Not burning out or not. Yeah. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I like that. I, it feels like someone who has less life experience would maybe pick the Iron Maiden, but I think you have but, a lot yeah, of life experience and you've got yeah, cool moments that you're like, I've had the cool moments. So, um, I realize yeah, it's yeah, a, exciting, moment, right? a moment, just a moment, man. Like I want, yeah, I want, um, yeah, it's just like a, it's like a good relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. a really, I think a relationship is special because like, I know a lot of people will relate. Like if you're in a relationship, like you're going to have lots of arguments. There's going to be a lot of tension at times and strife, but overall it's like, you're, you have support, love, and companionship for the long term. You know what I'm saying? Versus if you weren't in a relationship, you know, you're like going out and being exciting moments of hooking up or something like that. But it's not like you want the long term, like, yeah, just like feeling good 24 7. So if there's a little bit of work in terms of like fighting or fighting, <laughs> working through arguments and stuff like that, it's worth it versus. Not having to ever argument, but not having long term companionship and stuff like that. So I just, yeah, I feel like the value is in the um, the long term stuff for sure. Cool, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, <laughs> it, it, so the Iron Maidens at the bottom, and then it's hard time articulating. It might be bagels. It might be the hundred pound PR because oh, they're both long terms. Yeah. Well, the. Um, it's probably the it's probably it would be the hundred pound PR for sure. Love that because the bagels That's... and all that, like, who knows? You can like, buy bagels. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, yeah. You can well, buy bagels. You can't buy the PR. Yeah, the bagels, the bagels will always be there. The bagels will always be there, one way or another. And yeah, and maybe I'll cut down on the coffee down the road. Maybe I'll even start drinking green tea down the road. You know what I mean? So why would I want all this constant Mount Hagen coffee if I'm not even sucking down copious amounts anymore? But the hundred pound. PR that'll always be there all right all right next next question here what are your top three golden tidbits for intermediate lifters um man I've had so many tidbits it's hard to retrieve them but the ones that so the the I think the most valuable one that I have that applies to anyone is uh, I don't know if it actually has a term. I just always call it mindset manipulation. And it, it just works so great every time I ever do it. And that's like, it's basically bands. So like for bench, say I start with one plate on the bar, but I'll have four bands of resistance, you know, four bands on each side hooked up for added resistance. Because I'm looking at this as this one plate. So like, I'm going to smoke this shit. Okay, but yeah, I see there's four bands. You know what I'm saying? There's like eight total bands of tension. But it's like I'm telling you, like subconsciously, you just see the plates and you're like, this should move a lot easier. And then you get up to two plates and it's the four bands. Then you get up to three plates and it's like, um, fuck that. Let me strip a band. Okay, it's like okay, that moved a lot better. And then you get up to 365, maybe strip another band, or 405, strip another band. Now you have 405 and two bands per side. Uh, um, you know, you get to 455, strip another band. So you have 455 plus one band. And then you get up to like 495 or something like that with no bands. And I think that works so well because, like I said, the hard thing for me is getting through those like heavier warm-up sets because if those heavier warm-up sets feel hard then mentally i'm gonna start losing the freaking eye of the tiger that i can hit a pr but if they feel hard when you have the bands on well then in your head you're like well it's just it's the band tension you know yeah. what i'm saying and you have it's, it's almost the placebo effect you have no idea how much tension that so you really have no idea how much weight you're moving so you can tell yourself like that those bands are a hundred pounds a piece. You know what I'm saying? So it's then, yeah. oh, well, once I take the band off, I just took a hundred pounds off. And it's just like, it's crazy how it really does. Like I've only hit my biggest bench press PRs doing that band technique. I think it's just nice. because you have, you have, and it's like, it just instills this belief that you can hundred percent do the weight. Cause if you can do, you know, four or five plus two bands or four fifty five plus a band, but that band is probably at least 50 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's not, like, 
I'm telling you, when you look at the weights, like like 225 plus four bands, for all I know, that's that could be 500 pounds at the top. You know what I mean? But you're only just looking at the 200. You're only looking at the two plates per side. So it's like smoke it because like I'm telling you, your mind is so much more powerful than people realize that if if you were deadlifting two plates or something like that, you would fuck, even if those two plates were hundreds, but you didn't realize it, you'd probably be like, well, why did that feel harder than it yeah. should have? But you would still move it because it's like, if you like refuse to believe that you can't do it, you'd probably do it for the most part, unless it's so unrealistically out of your realm of strength. And um, I just tried this with trap bar deadlifts. It works great. Like it works so good that I did, um, just a million bands. Like when I was starting, um, I think I had like eight bands. It was kind of like, I don't know, if you like starting with like 16 bands of tension with like two plates. So for the two plates, like super heavy at the top. And I did the same thing. And I got to 800 with like four bands or something like that. And man, I tell you, like it moved just as easily as 800 with no bands when I look back at the footage between the two videos, because I've done 800 with no bands and I did the 800 with the bands. The speed is like almost the same, but the next day, like my traps were so fucking sore and that's because it probably was like 200 extra pounds of tension. You know what I'm saying? With the bands, yeah. I'm not saying on the very bottom, but on the bottom, there's definitely some tension. So, but that 800 moved just like how I would normally move 800. And for all I know, it's probably like 850 or something like that with the starting weight of the bands. I just was like so cooked because I did so many sets with like so many bands that I just like, I just felt so like jello that I didn't try going for like a PR with no bands. But I'm telling you, I probably could have gotten close to like the 920 or something that day with that band technique. And I'm going to keep doing it. I might actually even do it today or I'll squat today. But like I said, that's why I do upper lower because it, it allows me to do what I'm excited about more often. So whether I squat or I deadlift today, it doesn't matter because two more days from now, I'm going to squat or I'm going to deadlift again anyways. So, and those are going to be like my, really my only lifts that I do. You know what I mean? Today I'll probably just squat and then tomorrow I'll do like delts and packs and pulls and all that. And then the next day I'll just deadlift. And, uh, but I'm going to do the banded, that band technique, man, I'm telling you is so fucking money. I don't know. I've never seen anyone do it like that before. If people use bands, they just do the band. You know what I'm saying? They just yeah, do yeah, like yeah. banded deadlifts or banded, you know, bench press or something like with their weights plus the bands. But like, I don't understand why people don't progress with the weights while stripping the bands. Like it's just. You're, you're using it as a technique where you don't know what the weight is. So it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't hurt your confidence when you're going for a PR. If anything, it helps it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and worst case scenario, like say you don't hit your your goal weight, well, it's like, well, fuck, maybe I maybe I hit a PR. You like you just don't know, but like for sure, it doesn't affect your confidence, so it doesn't like hurt your mindset if you don't hit a PR because you have no idea of how much band tension you're moving. But the key is at least that you can you, you can still go for bigger and better weights. Cause you're stripping those, you know, I mean the freeway, you can still go for a bigger PR with the freeway, but those warmups, you have just no idea what you're moving. But as long as you start with a ton of bands, you're moving a shit ton of weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's, yeah. it's always like, okay, well next time I'll strip an extra band and I'll try to, it's just, dude, the best advice I can give for people is just trying to set bigger like records with everything. So even if it's like, well, I didn't hit a bench PR today, that's okay okay like throw a band on and then hit a pr with the band you know what i'm saying or like you know what i mean like there's a million yeah. different factors you can change to spice up your training and keep leveling up with something and when you do that it's just it sets the standard like your phone calls for instance like where most people are getting 70 you're going to get 140 it sets the standard like no matter what you do you're going to you're going to one up yourself every single time and there's just so many tricks to do that yeah I think that's great advice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw some images on the screen and uh, tell me what workout you would do with this person. So the first one is Tom Platt. What would that training session look like? 
Oh, man. I know everyone would be like, oh, I got to squat with Tom Flats. But honestly, I'm more intrigued with just his uh, ultra partner assisted burnout sets. <laughs> so, I don't, if anything, like, I already know what he's going to do for his squats and stuff. I would want to honestly, like, I'm more intrigued when I saw him doing behind the neck Smith machine presses with, like, his partner, like, pushing up on his elbow. Just pushing like, him up, yeah, yeah. like a hundred <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing the doing the bar the empty barbell curls where he's like pushing down on it. It's like, <laughs> you know, you're like all those like just crazy shock tactics. Like that's what I want to see. I want to see what way would Tom make this lift, this easy isolation exercise. What way is he going to make this thing absolutely impossible? Like that's what I would. Or like if we did do legs, where he's doing the push down on the eccentric, and I'm, or if he's like fighting on the concentric or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like all that crazy shit where it's like the partner. The partner is doing just as much work as he's doing. The partner is getting just as good of a workout because he's pushing Tom's weights and he's lifting the weights with Tom, doing the lateral raises where they're both lateral, they're both lateral raising the weights, <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's awesome. what I would want to do. <laughs> All right, next one is uh, what would you do with Arnold? Oh, Arnold. Um, we would have. I mean, I don't know what Arnold would do these days, but I mean, if it's classic Arnold, I would want you, to. You can go back in time. It can be whichever Arnold you want it to be. Okay. Um, I would definitely want to do the Venice, be on the, the classic Venice beach, just mogging the civilians, you know, the benching with the, the people in the stands and all that kind of stuff. They were doing like ultra wide. He always looked like he benched really wide. I definitely hit some flies with him. I'm a huge, I'm really big into flies. So. Which is crazy because I know, obviously Arnold was huge in the flies too, and everyone for the for decades wanted to be like Arnold. And I feel like at the gym, I see people doing flies, but only the only people I see doing flies are doing like baby weights. You know what I mean? Like I don't see anyone going really hard and heavy with flies. Not to say people should go too heavy with them because they do feel very sketchy when you go heavy. But I don't see anyone actually going hard with flies. I see people doing flies as kind of just like, you know, like, oh, I mean, stretch my pecs out. Like, yeah, and like you got know what I'm saying? They're, they're only well, approaching like and, 12 well, reps in reserve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 12 reps in reserve for sure. I don't see anyone ever like, I'm ever just feeling their flies. You know what I mean? It's always like the most comfortable yoga breathing. Like, they're like chatting with their buddy, chatting with their buddy while doing it. It drives me crazy. Like, how are yeah. you doing this? How are you talking yeah. during the set? Absolutely. Yeah. I believe if you can talk, that's like literally the definition of low intensity is if you can have a conversation while you're doing the exercise. All right. Last, last one here. What would you, so what would you work out, but also what would your tag team name be with Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump? Oh. <laughs> that would be Big Daddy Delts. Yeah. Oh, I oh, love yeah. That. <laughs> Big Papa Pump and Big Daddy Delts. Yeah. Oh man. That's, you know, the funny thing is, like, my two favorite wrestlers, I think, and this just shows, like, where my mind is at with wrestling, but, like, growing up was the ultimate warrior, which everyone in the business is like, oh, he's the worst worker ever. He sucks so much. Awful. His but, promos like, were great. Side note. Oh, like, dude, they were ridiculous, but they were this great. Is where people, this is where the, there's a disconnect, I feel like, with wrestling these days. It's so much about the dance in the ring, but it's there's no more, like, the, the freaking person themselves, like, the the just like the the image like when i saw wrestling as a kid i couldn't care less about the matches you know what i'm saying like that's just me i know a lot of people do but no i love i, I love hogan, like, I love hogan Steiner, growing like, oh, up hogan can wrestle and I'd, I'd, love this guy, I'd be like this guy's my favorite wrestler you know what i mean i'll buy his toys and shit i'll buy his shirts because he just looks fucking badass so scott steiner and ultimate warrior um and i think they i think triple h hated both of them so <laughs> <laughs> All I know is when I was a kid and I saw him wearing the chain mail, I'm like, that's so cool. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. It's like it's listen, brother, it's uh it's entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just just peacock, you know, show pony, you know what I'm saying? Like just look as cool as you can. But um Speaking yeah, of I mean, peacock, I think you uh you beat a peacock once in a pose down. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean the thing the thing had about twenty more feet of width on me. But uh, I think it backed off. I think you're right. I think I did defeat it. Yeah. I think we had a, a with contest. Um, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go back and watch the footage. But it was it was wide. But then it turned around on me. Unless it was just showing its mass and width. 
I can't remember. All right. So today we're going to finish off with this photo. Give me five to 10 words that describe this photo. Oh, <laughs> five to 10 words. Okay. Uh, Jack stacked, succulent, dense, curvaceous, bulbous, rotund, yet, you know, intramuscularly engorged. Yeah. I mean, this was like, this was my peak in terms of like, uh, girth for sure i'm probably down i mean you can probably see it in my face but <laughs> i'm probably down 20 pounds right now um funny yeah the funny thing is i was like in terms of blood work i was very healthy my cholesterol was great um but in terms of like how i felt because i was like 20 pounds i remember like going up walking up the stairs would kind of you know i have to catch my breath for a second you know what i'm saying Whereas now it's like I got to run up the stairs and grab like my daughter's stuffed animal. I can just like run up and I'm like, damn, I can't believe that used to like kind of take the wind out of me. (laughs) So being really heavy is cool in a sense. But, you know, now that I've been that I've been there and I've done that, like it's uh, it's not that great. You feel terrible. I feel like you put like. Yes, you'll like, you'll look bigger, but you're also like your your face gets like fatter inside. I feel like you just kind of lose your your sense of who you are. You get too caught up in like your your muscle girth and all that, and you're like oh, I look jacked. But then once you lose the weight, you're like, oh man, you look back and you're like, I guess I looked kind of bad, didn't I? My face was fat. You know what I mean? Like I was just like a little really bloated looking. So like in that regard, maybe I. My advice for the longest time was like people should eat a thousand calories of treats in the workout, and, you know, have a thousand calories of the oatmeal before your workout and have, um, you know, at least a thousand calories of bagels post work. I mean, like, listen, that'll get you fucking very big and bloated for sure. That'll put the size on. So if that's what you want, it's great. But uh, and maybe it's necessary for like a bulking phase per se. But um I think I got too caught up in that. You know what I'm saying? Like I did that like bagel bulk, treat bulk for probably two years. (laughs) So once I, once I was done with WWE, I was like, I don't really, why am I even trying? I don't care. Like I just, I want to just try to lose weight now and see what happens. And um, the funny thing is my strength is, I think I, I think I'm actually getting stronger, which is crazy. But it does. It's not that crazy because I'm. I think I just feel better, and it goes back to like the, you're gonna perform. If you feel good, you're gonna perform better. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And it's kind of like a no brainer. But at the same time, I'm sure plenty of people will be like, "Well, if you're you know way bigger, you're gonna be stronger." But it's like, oh, not necessarily. You know what I mean? Like my whole thing's always been like energy. You know what I mean? And like intensity, like in the gym, like fucking you know screaming and grabbing the bar fucking I'm feeling good and like yeah. when you're tired it's hard to it's hard to muster up that energy you know what I mean so like I'm kind of it's hard to lose weight like when you work so hard to gain it but I'm kind of I'm liking um I'm liking the natural energy better you know what I'm saying like the energy that comes with being lighter and like not constantly feeling full. Like, oh, I just scarfed down five bagels and I'm sluggish and bloated. Now I'll try to lift weights. Like, now I'll just, like, sometimes I'll, I won't eat till like 2 p.m. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. A lot, of, a lot of times, usually, I don't really stress the eating too much anymore. I got to be careful, though, because, like, for, for me, like, I'm, um, for my body type, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been, like, uh, lean and lanky. So like if I don't stay on top of like scarfing down calories and stuff like that, I'll just I'll go right back to that. And that's why it was so easy for me to lose weight. Like I lost probably 10 pounds once once I had decided to stop eating treats during my workout and all that kind of stuff. I probably lost 10 pounds in like a week. You know what I mean? Like if my body if if like if I just went like uh only eating when I wanted to, um like in college, for instance, um, when I wasn't – well, it's tough to say because that was so long ago. But, dude, I mean, I could probably get down to 
uh, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to say theoretically because when I was at my when I was like a string bean, I was also cutting weight. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't eating like anything. So I can't yeah. really look back at that. And then once I decided to bulk up, like for heavyweight in college, then dude, I've been bulking for so long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can't. Even, like right now, I think it's like right now. Eh, there's probably a couple years there, but man, out of the past, I started bulking. Uh, 15 years ago, I would say, and throughout those 15 years, there might have been like a couple, like a year here and there where I didn't care. But for the most part, I've always been trying to shovel down calories and drinking gallons of milk and it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just for so long. So I don't even know. Like if I just like was like an average Joe and woke up and you know had a, I don't even know what people eat. I don't think this. I don't think this is happening, bro. I don't think you're going to be an average Joe. No, I don't I think, think you're going to yeah, no wake up and have. A, a, a kiwi and an egg white sandwich, yeah. and that's it for 10. Yeah, I don't think exactly. that's happening, man. <laughs> kiwi, egg white, English muffin, and then just have like a, I don't know. Oh, I'm like stuffed. Dinner. Dinner. And then they're yeah, like, exactly. oh, I'm stuffed. It's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always be hoisted around a sack of bagels anywhere I go. It's hilarious. <laughs> People are like, oh, where are your bagels? Like, I'm just, the funniest thing is like when I was always traveling, like every three days, I was like at the airport. And people were like, where are your bagels? And they were, I was like, they're right here. I pull them out of my fanny pack because they would joke like, "Oh, you don't have your bagel," but I, no, I got them. They're in my fanny pack. <laughs> I mean, it's it's better than eating airport food. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Even though the airports, like the, I started to kind of figure them out though. They at the end there, like the airports are starting to figure them out. They got these vending machines where you can get like, uh, it's not like it's good, but it's like, oh, you get this hard boiled egg and stuff from, like a vending machine. Not great, but it still beat like uh, having to get like the fast food. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I guess I can eat Bojangles chicken, or you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not many options. Hardies. Oh shit! All right, dude. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a lot of fun. Where can everyone find you? Um, YouTube. Uh, but mainly, yeah, YouTube, it's Eric Bugenhagen official, I think. Someone took my handle, I guess. So it's got to be Eric Bugenhagen official. And then Instagram's Eric Bugenhagen official as well. Uh, Cameo, right? Eric Bugenhagen. Um, I'm on Twitter. I don't really, I'm not a huge Twitter fan. I don't really do much on Twitter. Uh, what else? They got a million platforms. Patreon. Eric Bugenhagen. Just, you know, we're everywhere, brother. You know, car talks with the wife, live streaming, Eric Bugenhagen live. I got to find, I got to get more on top of my streaming though. You know, I get a right. kick. I'll do it for, I'll do it for weeks and then I'll just like stop doing it for months. It's probably not a very That's good fine, approach. For you, yeah. you're talk, we're, we were talking about there's a limited amount of energy, right? So like you got to just pick it's your true. shit. You can't, do it. you can't do everything all the time. Like I think that's, do it. honestly, I think that's the main reason. People are like, why don't you like, because I live stream my workouts for like a month. You're like, why did you stop doing that? It's like, dude, again, we're talking limited energy. Like, to talk thing. to a camera while trying to max out, it's just like, it was just, I was spending three times the amount of energy that I should. Because if I have a camera on me, I'm not going to just like dilly. Like, I'm going to try to be engaged the whole time. But at the same time, I'm going to try to lift the heftiest loads I can because I'm on camera. So I have to perform at my best, but I got to still talk. I'm asking we're having this conversation right now, but I'm at the same time, I'm trying to like max out on deadlifts. How hard would that be? Yeah. So the same thing with like my wife, we were doing a, we we're talking to the car on the way to the gym. And it's true though. It's like, but I'm, you know, maybe I just need to crank the tunes, muster up the intensity. So when I get in the gym, I'm a ball of fire. Whereas like, even just talking, it's, it's, I don't know. It takes something out of you. Not a lot, but you know what I mean? I think it's it takes something. the, it takes the eye of the tiger out of you. Cause you're like having a good time. You're conversing, you're smiling, you're chit chatting. Whereas uh, personally for me, I think I had my best lifting aggression when I was, uh, I was a personal trainer and I was, I would work with clients and like, it's like what we talked about earlier in this uh, this uh, talk was that like most people, their approach to the, the gym is just so lethargic and just get through it and complain while they're not seeing results and stuff. And it just drove me crazy because I just, I can't relate. And I, would, I don't know, dude, I just, maybe I was just an angsty young man 
but <laughs> I got so ticked off at some people that I just had some of the greatest deadlifting sessions of my life. Awesome, man. You know, Thank you so much for your time. That was a lot of fun, man. I'm excited. Take care. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you for chit chatting with me. You're trying to let me go, but I'm not going to let you go. We're going to talk. All right, give me your top. Give me your top 474 golden tidbits. <laughs> they're all there online, man. Somebody said I gotta get a book or something of tidbits, and they're not wrong. You know what I mean? Because I think I've been coming out with tidbits now for. You know, how about this? If someone's watching this video, go make a compilation of Eric's tidbits and post it on YouTube, and then he doesn't. It'll have be to a do lot anymore. of work. It'll be someone, a lot of work. Someone sure. will do it. There's always someone who who will do it. So. If yeah. you're listening, do it. Well, someone asked someone, someone asked me like, um, they're like, hey man, like, uh, do you have any like clips that you like where you talk or something? Or, I can't even remember what they were looking for. I was like, dude, I have no idea. I have like literally there's like a thousand videos. Like, <laughs> I don't remember any of this stuff. I mean, if if something if you like you bring something up, I'm like, oh yeah, but like off the back of my mind, I can't remember. For sure. Yeah, you know I mean, I can't remember any tidbits. I can't remember any inspirational speeches i've given for the most part it's just like uh yeah i mean you're gonna have to do the research you know Bro, sometimes, gonna... <laughs> some, sometimes i open the fridge and i don't remember why i went to the fridge so it's okay you ever close an app and then open the app instantly and be like wait a oh, second no. i just closed it yeah <laughs> sometimes sometimes i'll be looking for my phone and the phone's in my hand i'm just like am i this oh yeah know, what's going on here like it's yeah just, okay <laughs> i've had times where i was on a web i was like reading on a website and then i like um, I entered that same website. I'm like, what are the, you know, say like, yeah, the brain is a cr- incredible thing. <laughs> it's, it, it's wandering sometimes. Right. So yeah. 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 Oh, right, good. Man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the beauty of the gym. That's why I love the gym so much is you can let your brain wander and that's where the brilliance comes up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what is it? I just got this barbell and I got this band and I got this like hook. What can I do with this? You know? Yeah, there's this thing called flow, right? Like flow is when challenge meets skill. So probably for you, that's the gym. Like challenge meets skill. So it's a big challenge, but it's a challenge you think you could do. And then you kind of get in flow. And that's when time gets distorted. Either it's really fast or really slow. A lot of like Uh, pro athletes feel that. So you probably feel that at the gym. Yeah. I (laughs) You probably don't know what's going on. I love working out in my garage because like it's like, it's limited to an extent, but because it's limited, it ends up like, yeah, it brings out like the best in me for sure. Cause it's like, like you said, you just feel wrapped up and then time, time passes by and you've been in there for four hours and you've come up with these ridiculous like creations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, go to, if you like go to a big gym that has a bunch of equipment, you're like, yeah, I guess I'll use this, this, and this. But when, when you have like just a bar and a couple tools at your disposal, it's like, yeah. you can make some magic, man. You can wear an you can wear like a neck flex and do curls at the same time. Like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, why do why do people not do this? This actually feels good. And it does. And when I I don't know why I stopped doing some stuff because that was that was money, man. Like the the, the neck strap yeah. with the curl. Because <laughs> if you're gonna cheat, then you have to get more like neck. Then you have to use your neck. neck. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah, that's that should be in every gym. There's like the neck <laughs> stage. That should be the first thing personal trainers teach new lifters at the gym. Like, okay, we're going to strap you into this neck, yeah. right? <laughs> Girl. If they pass the test, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a test of humility. Because you're going to look a little silly. But listen, if you don't mind looking silly, then the sky's the limit. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing, too. I think people in the gym, for the most part, like they're scared of looking silly. You know what I mean? And I, and I get it. Because like a lot of people, like they, they, they don't want to like grunt or anything and listen grunting is grunting is like a tricky situation because there's a, there's a point where you're doing it and you're being loud and obnoxious but there's also a point where it's like necessary to really push through big weights you get what i'm saying so like that one's for the common gym folk like, oh my god that guy's so loud and annoying but personally for me like if it's a big set like i have to let some noise up you know what I mean? But I would never do that on my like light sets because it's just it's not necessary. Save it. Like, you know what I mean? There's like, a, there's, like a, there's like a jack to grunting ratio. The more jacked you are, the louder you can grunt without it being obnoxious, but there's still a level where well, it's obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there is a lot of people are still gonna judge you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how Planet Fitness has like the judgment-free zone, but the, the meatheads and the 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 
the gym rats, they're the most judged people there are because for the most part, they just want to hoist the biggest freaking weights possible. But everyone's like looking at them like, oh, there's such an ego lifter, there's such a, you know what I mean? Like buffoon making all that noise and stuff. And it's like, listen, we're just trying to get, we're just trying to get to our peak potential. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah. Anyways, I don't even know what we're talking. I forgot what the topic was even just grunting, no. groaning, moaning. <laughs> All right, Anyways, man. I'll, I'll talk let to you, you go. Later. I know you got a family, and yeah. oh no, it's not even that. Just uh, we can do a part two, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. I probably should eat something. I drank my coffee. You know, uh, now I should probably get those squats in. So I just, uh, like I guess I could talk forever, bro. Really. You know what I mean? I could talk forever. I think that's I found my calling when it comes to just talking to a camera. It's it's my happy place. Talking about lift. Talking about lifting weights. To myself. That's my happy place. <laughs>